Hi there, so this is um, question five from exercise 14a and it's uh, a function that we need to find the derivative of. So f of x equals the sine of the square root of x. And this is a classic um, example of uh, the use of the chain rule. Now the chain rule sort of works on um, nested functions where you've got a function inside of another function. Now the inside function is the square root of x and the outside function is the square root, the sine of square root of x. So um, I guess the best uh, analogy I can think of is something like these um, matryoshka dolls where you, you know, you've got a doll and inside the other doll, you've got another doll and inside that doll, you've got another doll and so on. So what you need to do is you need to deal with the inside doll first and then you multiply it by the outside doll um, in its entirety. So let's see how we go with that one. In this case, the inside function is root x. If it's anything other than just x, you treat it like a, like a tone function. So the inside function is root x, and it's inside this big function here called the sine of root x. So um, I'd encourage you to probably start to do, do these things in your head um, rather than using u and v and, and, and leave uh, u and v for the product or quotient rule. Um, so if you look at the inside function, you've got the square root of x. And the only way of dealing with the square root of x is to turn into a power. So it's x to the power of a half. So if that's what um, if that's what the function is, then we need to find the derivative of that. So the next line would be, what's the derivative of x to the power of a half? Well, I bring the power down. So that's a half. x to the power of, and then we subtract 1 from the power. So a half minus 1 is minus a half. There we go. That's the derivative of that. I'll just make that two a little bit clearer. So that's the derivative of the inside function. And I'm going to multiply it by this, the, um, the derivative of the outside function with respect to the inside function, which means that you just kind of um, um, leave the inside bit alone now. So the derivative of sine is cosine. So the derivative of sine root x is now cos root x with respect to root x. Great, now we just need to simplify this whole mess. Um, it means you need to remember your power um, rules. So when I raise something to a negative power, like so, it means that it should uh, be sunk to the bottom. So that leaves me with one on two to the x to the power of positive a half. I've just sunk the x to the power of negative half to the bottom times cosine of root x, and now I'm just going to change it back into square root sort of language. So I'll have cos root x on the top, one times that is that, and the bottom I've got two root x. Now you may need to go one extra step depending on how, um, uh, depending on on the context of the question, but that there is a root x on the bottom and, and technically you should rationalize your denominator whenever you can. So I'm gonna multiply the bottom by root x and multiply the top by root x. And that gives me root x multiplied by cos root x on the top all over two x on the bottom. And that's now got a rational denominator. But um, I suspect, I haven't looked at it, but I suspect the textbook would be fine with, um, with this as, your, as our answer. Let's go have a little look. So this was 14a question five, so I'll just go to the answer. 14a question five. Yeah, it didn't bother rationalizing, so cos root x over two times root x. Okay, that's question five done.